All right, so here I am on the newsletter which we just did together. Uh, let's see, I believe I am on the A Master and I had just created these page numbers. Another word for those is folios. And we, sh we looked at how on each page you'll see the page number that it's on. But on the master page, you've got an A because remember the way that you got that A there is you didn't actually type an A, you inserted a special character here and it was the marker and current page number. That's what got the A there. It's, it's a little frustrating for some new users who think that they can just type an A and it will turn into a page number in the pages of the document, but that's not how it works. So I made a little list of the things I'd like to show you in this video. Here it is. I want to show you how to design a masthead. I'm going to do a very simple one. I want to show you how to unify these folios, these page numbers, with the masthead. How to create a unifying element or two. How to import text, define styles, and import images. So this video is going to be a little bit longer. Let's go to page one double click on one and design a masthead. So the masthead is the name of the newsletter and I have decided to name my newsletter Color Theory because the text that I imported is about color theory. I think I told you this, I just went to Wikipedia and imported some uh, and copy and pasted some text some article about color theory. So there's my newsletter headline. Right now my default style is an avant-garde which I kind of like so I'll use that. I'm going to make it a larger point size. That doesn't fit but let's see if I change this to impact which is a great font for headline style things. And I think I'll make this a lighter weight, not bold. So I'm just using my designer eye here to do things that I think look good. Maybe I'll make this orange. And I don't see an orange here, so I'll create one by starting with the pink and then choosing new color swatch. So I'll add yellow and subtract some of the red till I have a nice bright orange. So you might remember from your own color theory studies that blue and orange are complementary colors. This is not, I think it's a light blue that would be more complementary to the orange, meaning exactly opposite on the color wheel. But I like this dark blue, plus I think I might make the text a dark blue too to unify that. If I zoom in, control or command plus, I can see that in avant-garde, the characters don't quite meet the top of where the impact characters meet. So I'm going to make this a little larger. There we go. That looks good. Oops, I did the TH but not the E-O-R-Y. There we go. And I see that the spaces between some of these letters could be better. So I'm going to just do a little bit of individual letter kerning. You may have learned about kerning in a previous assignment. And now the last thing I want to do is, let me zoom out a little, I would like my masthead to stretch across the page. Right now it's that size. So I'll make the text frame small just so that it's the size of the text. Hold Shift and Option or Alt. I mean, I'm sorry. Hold Shift and Command. And then just drag a corner until it's exactly the width I want it. And that's pretty good. It's a little loose there, so I'll just notch it up a little bit. There we go. And then maybe the space between color and theory could be less. So this is the place where you just kind of tweak everything. 
to make it exactly the way you might want it. It's worth paying attention to detail. All right, I'm going to scoot this down because I'm thinking that another unifying element might be uh, an orange line or an orange bar at the top of every page. So you can see I've got four pages here. When you want something to be on every page, like the page numbers, you'll put it on the master pages. So double click to get there, zoom in, and here's a unifying element. I'm getting my rectangle frame tool. I'm going to, using my guides, create a bar. I think a third of an inch is too much. I'm going to go with just under a quarter. And I will fill it with that same orange. Where is it? There it is. Oops. And I will copy this by selecting it, holding my Alt or Option key, and just dragging and copy over here. So because that is on my master pages, it will appear, now I'll click on page one, there it is. Two and three, there it is. Four, there it is. So remember, putting items on your master pages means that they will land on all your pages. So let's make sure we're back onto page one so we can import the text. What else do I have here? Oh no, I would like to do something with the folio. So let's go back to the master pages. I wanna get some of that orange. So I did number one and number three. Now I'm gonna do number three and number two. I'm gonna unify the folios with the masthead and I'm gonna make it another unifying element. So this word color theory here, I would like to make it match my masthead. Let me go to page one and copy that. Control C. Go back to my master page and create a text frame. Control V. That text frame wasn't quite big enough, you can see, so I'll just expand it and make it a little bigger. And now what I want to do is make this about 12 point. It's going to be two different point sizes because remember I made the word theory larger. So I'm typing shift command and then my less than symbol. On the keyboard commands down there it looks like a comma, but it's not. It's the less than symbol. And I think that looks like about 12 point. Let me just type a 12 here. There we go. And I'm going to cut that. Control X. And I will paste it right here. Much more unifying, don't you think? Let's put it over here too. And as I said, it's worth always examining this. Why would I want orange, dark blue, and black? So I'm going to make this uh, that same dark blue, I guess. That would be nice. And then next I'll deal with that page number. So what I'm thinking about is the O, in theory, in this typeface, looks a lot like a perfect circle. And I've got the orange color here, so maybe I'll make this first a unifying font. Instead of Arial Black, I will make it uh, the avant-garde font and bold. And I'll make that 12 point as well. Then I'll put three spaces in front of it, one, two, three. And with my elliptical frame tool, if you click and hold the rectangle frame tool, you'll get the ellipse. Holding my shift key, I'm going to draw a perfect circle. I'm going to fill that circle with orange. And then I'm going to send it to the back behind the A page number. So object, arrange, send to back. 
Notice the keyboard shortcut is shift command left bracket. I'll be using that next time. I'm using my arrows on my keyboard to get that perfectly centered. And then with my text tool, I get it by clicking twice in the text frame. I'll make that text white. Paper is what InDesign uses for white. So I will simply copy this Control C, orange circle, and bring it over here. Control V, there it is. And drag it to where I want it. Now what we did here was three more spaces and we made the A white. And we also made it avant-garde bold. And I believe we also made it 12 point. So now the two sides match. Um, why don't I see it? Is this in front? Shift command left bracket. There we go. So now I'm feeling pretty good about this. Maybe that should be italics. Hmm, something to think about. I'm on my master pages, so let's go back to page one. See what that page number looks like. I like it. I'm going to press my W to see what it looks like without the guides. Very nice. I'm happy with it. Let's look at pages two and three. Mm -hmm. One thing that bothers me a little bit is that orange, orange here and blue, blue here. But over here it goes blue, orange, blue, orange. So on the right-hand page, I could make the word theory orange and the word color blue, just to make it look a little more consistent. I'll do that real quick. So this is the story with uh, designing kind of on the fly, which is what I'm doing and what you can do too. Um, you change things. You make one decision and then as things change, you make another decision. You update your priorities based on the design. I think that's better. I'm going to do a save. File, save, because it's always good to save in between, oh, every five minutes or so. So there's page one. Let me do a fit in window. Let's look at pages two and three. Yeah, I think that's much nicer. Another something I could do to make these even more consistent is make this word color the avant-garde book and this word theory the impact. I'll do that last change too. Again, revise, revise, revise. Right? You check it out. You see if you like it. Sometimes you do something and you don't like it and you put it right back. But I think I'm going to like this. Save. And back to the center spread so I can see what it looks like. Let me close this. So I'm zooming out. Oh gosh, much nicer. Look at that. There's great unity. All right, let's get the guides back. I'm typing a W. It works because I'm not in a text frame. Nothing is selected. I did number one, which was design a masthead. I did number two, which was to unify that masthead with my folios. I did number three, which was to create some unifying elements. That's the orange, the blue. And now I'm going to import my text, and then I'll define some styles and import the images. To place text, you simply choose File, Place. It's easy to remember because you think, I'm going to place text, or I'm going to place images. So here's my newsletter text, open, I'm going to draw a text frame. This is called a loaded cursor. And it should bring all the text from my Microsoft Word document. There it is. 
Now I want this to flow onto the other pages. So with my selection tool, I'll select that text frame and then click in the red plus symbol. That gives me another loaded cursor. So I'll draw another text frame. Now I've chosen to put my text, I'm gonna keep doing this as I talk. I've chosen to put my text on the inside two columns and to use the outside column for images. That's all the text I have. But once I format it and put headlines in and subheads, it may go to the fourth page. So I'm going to click the Outport and just draw a text frame so it will flow naturally in case I need it. And now I'm going to define some styles. So let's see, what could I do? I need to get my paragraph styles window. Styles and paragraph styles. You'll be so impressed with what happens here. I'm going to, you probably don't see any styles in yours, so I'm going to delete these so that I can start fresh with you. All right, so with my text tool, I'm here in the text frame. I'll select it all, Control A or Command A, depending on if you're on Mac or Windows. And now I'll double click way over here in the right side of this to define this style called Basic Paragraph. And the first thing I want to do is right here. I like Palatino. I like 10 on 12. This is something I've chosen. I hope that you'll also choose 10 on 12. Don't make your body text any larger or smaller. 9, 10, and 11. Those are the three accepted point sizes. I like optical here. I think I will make my character color that blue. And I think that's about it. That's what I like about it. So this is a headline. I'll create a new style and I'll name it headline. So I'd like my headline to be uh, that same avant-garde. Let's see, what was that called? ITC avant-garde maybe? No. There it is, avant-garde. And book, I like that, but I think I'll make it 20. 18 was as close as the drop-down menu brought me, so I'm just typing in 20. And I'm going to set this solid, 20 on 20. I am going to make sure that it is aligned left, because I would like my headlines, like the body copy, to be aligned left. I'm going to make sure it's that same blue it is. You should never have hyphenation in a headline, so I'm going to uncheck hyphenation and click OK. So now that I have that selected, I can click Headline, and there it is. So look, I can just go through here, one click, Headline. Look how wonderful and easy it is to create headlines now that you've defined your style. Oops, I accidentally did the line below it. I'm not zoomed in very close, so... And I know that in my article I also have some subheads. So this is a subhead. So let me create a new style, new paragraph style. I'm going to name it subhead. And I think that what I'd like that to be is also the same ITC avant-garde, but I think I'll make these bold. And everything else, let me check the color and make sure it's blue. Yeah, everything else should be fine. So let's make this a subhead. That's a headline. And that's a subhead. I know these because I've studied my article carefully. I really read through it to make sure it's what I would want. But uh, 
you know, you'll look at your article and make these decisions on your own. So another thing I'm noticing is, let me zoom in here, is that in my body copy, this tab for the beginning of a paragraph, it's awfully big. I'm going to deselect everything and then open up basic paragraph. And in the indents, no, in the tabs, I'm going to set a quarter inch. I thought I had it exactly, but there we go. Quarter inch tab. Now that indent is a little better. All right, so there is my text. Now I'm going to, let's see, I have a secondary article, something that I was calling a sidebar called definitions. I'm going to create a text frame here for that. I like the idea of saving one column for just kind of like some aside text. File, place. Here's where I'll put my definitions. There they are. So in order to make this a little more exciting, I'll start with my selection tool and make the background color of this box that blue. And then again with my T tool, I'll make the text color white. Once again, InDesign calls that paper. So that's white. So now I want to do a few more things to make this look good. With my arrow tool and the frame selected, I'm going to choose text frame options. This will allow me to do a few great things. The preview button is selected so you'll be able to see what's happening as I do it. I'm going to link the inset spacing and then hit the up arrow twice. See how that puts a nice border around everything? I like that. And then I'll make this that avant-garde. How about that? And I feel like since it is um, white text on dark background, I should make it bold. I might even go up a point size and increase my letting just to make it easy to read. There we go. Starting to look good. Now all I have to do is bring in a few images. So let me show you how to bring in an image and wrap text around it. Let's do a save, file save, just to make sure all the work we've done is being saved. And again, file, place. So the first image I'm going to bring in, let's open up my links folder, is the color theory, color wheel history. I'll click open and oops, see what happened here? I had this selected at the same time as going to choose file place. That's a mistake. That's a bad idea. I'm going to type control Z to get rid of that. And now I'm back to my loaded cursor. I think I'd like this image here. So I just draw the box. And there it is. Let me zoom in so you can see what's happening. It's on top of the text, and that's not really nice. What I'd like to have is for the text to wrap around this image. So while it's still selected, I'll click on this text wrap box and click this. That means wrap it ar around a square. And then making sure this is linked, if that's what you want, I'm going to hit the up arrow just to put a little space around it. You can see this, let me zoom in a little more, this pale blue line around the text frame. I'll make it larger so you can see how the text wrap works. And I can, if I want to, unlink it and make one side, let's make the bottom of it less of a text wrap. So I'm going to zoom out. I've wrapped an image, I've changed, I've brought in another article and made it look a little different. I've created some styles. You would never end an article at the beginning of a headline, so I might have to bring this text frame up. But I'm going to show you my completed document so that you can see all the things I did to it. I've saved it over here. There it is. 
So what I ended up doing, as you can tell, I did a little more styling here. I decided to make it with a bold headline, but three bold categories. And then I put examples of each kind of color wheel here. You can see I did not end this column with a headline. That's just hard for the reader. And then I gave this image a wrapped, let's see if I click this, you can see, let me get rid of that. You can see the text wrap I put on that photo caption. See the square I chose for it? On pages two and three, I brought in all of these images, which each one has to do with the copy to the very right of it. Um, what else did I do? I didn't have enough space to fill everything, so I added this. I just built it. It's a text frame that's been rotated 90 degrees. I was just filling space, and I wanted to follow the format of using the outside column. You can see I inserted some images here that I took right from the article. And on the back page, I reserved a letter-sized panel for mailing. You're going to choose first, File, Save. And then you're going to click this Publish Online link. When you click that button, excuse me, it's going to generate a link for you. Here it comes. It takes a few minutes, well, a few seconds. Um, and then it is, I'm just going to say publish new because that's probably what you would have. I like publishing it as a spread so people can flip through the pages easily. I also like to say allow the viewer to download a PDF. Why not, right? Why not? And when you click publish, you'll see it go through the mechanics of publishing it online. Here that is. And then it's going to provide me with a link. The link is what I want you to post in the discussion. So here's the link. I can click view document if I want to, but I don't need to because I've been looking at it. I can copy the link and then close this. And that's what you'll do too. copy the link and then paste that link into Brightspace. Thanks for watching this.